Oh, the matte black exterior. The tasteful thickness. And is that a nipple? They just don't make laptops like this anymore. The ThinkPad. One of the most iconic laptops of all time. But on the internet, it's gained a cult following like no other laptop. There's memes about ThinkPads. There's forums dedicated to talking about ThinkPads. There's collectors of ThinkPads. You've probably seen your favorite tech YouTuber raving about how much they love ThinkPads. The online community around ThinkPads is huge. But how did ThinkPads become so popular online? What's all the hype about? And are they really that good? In this video, we're going to go over how ThinkPads went from a simple business laptop to an online cult. Now, we can't talk about the current users of ThinkPads without talking about the original market for them. ThinkPads were originally manufactured by IBM, the company that popularized the entire idea of having a personal computer. The laptops they made were high quality, innovative, and their designs won award after award. Even before ThinkPads developed their legendary status on the internet, they already had a cult following in the business world. For a long time, if you were serious about using your laptop for business, you used a ThinkPad. It was just part of the business uniform, along with the Blackberry, of course. Yup, it's business in time. And it wasn't for no reason that ThinkPads were popular with businesses. First off, they were practically indestructible. They could really take a beating. Now, if you use a MacBook, you might want to avert your eyes from the screen. But you could drop these things. ThinkPads would have roll cages protecting the important components inside. You could spill a glass of water on the keyboard. There's a tray under the keyboard with drain holes going out the bottom, whereas other computers would just have the motherboard underneath with little to no protection. They're dust resistant, they're heat resistant, they're space resistant. That's right, they've even been to space. Basically, they're pretty sturdy. They were designed to withstand the rigors of business travel, and it needed to be able to take some bumps along the way. And they succeeded. That's not the only part of the design that business customers liked. They were also just great to work on. The keyboard was better than anything else at the time. And then there's the iconic design that hasn't changed for decades. With other companies, the laptop design usually goes through major changes every few years. And if you like your old laptop, you might not be able to get the same laptop again when it's time to upgrade in a few years. But the ThinkPad has made a deliberate effort to keep the design the same. David Hill, who served as the design chief for ThinkPads for over 20 years, was told in 1995 that it was time to change the design up after three years of the same thing. But he was not changing the design. He said, of all the problems we have, this isn't one of them. And he said, if the design ain't broke, don't fix it. And it looks like he got his wish all the way up until present day. That's why you still have the same black brick that you did 30 years ago. You still have the little nub in the middle of the keyboard. It's been there for decades. Some might think it's unnecessary when we now have much better trackpads, but that's part of what makes a ThinkPad a ThinkPad. Yep, people loved it. So ThinkPads have always been popular in the corporate world, and they're still popular to this day. But how did they cross over to be the preferred laptop of computer nerds everywhere? So ThinkPads were always meant to be business class laptops, and they were never really marketed to consumers. These business class laptops, at the time, were not cheap. But after their leases up, companies were replacing them with something else, and selling them on the used market for cheap. That's when savvy consumers started to notice how good these laptops were as well. Even laptops that were 5 years old, or even older, were still in good condition. Now, in the 2010s, consumer-grade laptops were starting to slim down. The thick, bulky Windows laptops were no longer in. Slim, stylish MacBooks were now paving the way for laptops everywhere. Apple, of course, made massive profits by making laptops look sexy. And with the internet really becoming part of mainstream life, computers weren't just for businesses or nerds anymore. They were for everyone. But computer enthusiasts were getting fed up with Apple's design decisions. Sure, the MacBooks looked great. But design is about more than aesthetics. Apple started removing ports on their laptops. They started soldering all of the components onto the motherboard. Before, if you wanted to upgrade the RAM or the CPU or the storage space, you could just open up your computer and replace it, just like you would a desktop computer. But now other companies were starting to follow in Apple's footsteps, and laptops were getting less upgradable and repairable. Now if your laptop slowed down, instead of adding more RAM, you just threw it away and bought a new one. Now laptop manufacturers can make more money than ever. So old ThinkPads started to be used in a way to fight back against the direction that laptops were headed in. Sure, they were old, but they were still upgradable. If you'd like to tinker with computers, you would love using a ThinkPad. And people would replace everything on these laptops. Here's one example of someone who replaced the CPU, the RAM, the storage, the battery, the heatsink and fan, and the Wi-Fi card. 
That's how extensible these things were. They were used as a big middle finger to companies like Apple that didn't allow you any control over your own device. You weren't supposed to open up your Apple device yourself. You were supposed to take it to the Genius Bar where they would tell you to purchase a new $2,000 machine. The best part is old ThinkPads are dirt cheap. To this day, you can still get a decent ThinkPad for as little as $150. And if you want to spend more money, just buy more parts and install them yourself. It'll still end up being cheaper than a new laptop. Now, laptops that are years old start to slow down, especially if they're running Windows. After five years of use, a Windows laptop is usually on death's door. But if you know how to install Linux, that's just the beginning. Linux is known for being much less bloated than Windows. Especially modern Windows, like Windows 11, it loves to eat your RAM. But you can install a minimal distribution of Linux on your laptop with only 4GB of RAM and still have it work fine. ThinkPads have always had excellent Linux compatibility. A lot of laptops are difficult to run Linux on, with some features not being compatible. You might have issues with the Wi-Fi card or the audio. But running Linux on ThinkPads is almost always a painless process. So it was basically a perfect storm for power users around the world. Old ThinkPads were essentially the counterculture to everything that was wrong with modern laptops. And of course, people started to notice. I don't really know where the meme started, but if you were on 4chan's technology board in the 2010s, and even now, you can't avoid ThinkPads. ThinkPads started to be THE laptop if you wanted to be cool in tech enthusiast spaces. Like how Apple products are a status symbol, ThinkPads started to become their own sort of status symbol online. If you bought a ThinkPad, you didn't just use it. You would show it off on 4chan or Reddit or the enthusiast forum on ThinkPads.com. And the coolest people didn't just own one ThinkPad. You owned several. You upgraded your old ones. And you even bought the ThickPad docking station to make it even more powerful. And don't forget the NeoFetch so you can show everyone how cool you are for installing Arch Linux. You would show it off online, get recommendations on how to upgrade yours, and post buying guides so other people could get their own ThinkPad. Thanks to the meme, people started purchasing ThinkPads having no idea about the history of ThinkPads. They were just a cool tool that people used online. You would start to hear about people who fell for the meme, or bought a ThinkPad after seeing so many posts about it online. It became almost a counterculture status symbol, the anti-MacBook. Compared to the other laptops at the time, it looked like a brick and weighed double what modern laptops weighed. You could take it to a Starbucks to work and make females everywhere drop their soy milk lattes. What is that? It's so unshowy, it's become a way for nerds to show off. Since the brand gained such a legendary status for making business laptops, it still carries over some of its identity for being a real man's laptop for getting real work done. It's not a Facebook machine for middle-aged white women. It's not a MacBook that soy boy developers and designers would use. It's a tool for getting things done. When they see you set down the ThinkPad in the cafe, everyone knows you're about to blow their minds with your amazing programming skills. But the fun can't last forever. Ever since the ThinkPad brand was sold from IBM to Lenovo in 2007, people have been complaining about the declining quality of the brand. Now a lot of this is just the standard complaining you hear anytime any change is made. But let's face it, modern ThinkPads aren't quite what they used to be. First off, they've become much more similar to other modern laptops. ThinkPads these days are thin, sleek, and are often built with soldered in CPUs and RAM. So they're not as upgradable as they used to be. With them being thinner and more lightweight, they're now more fragile than they used to be. There's just no more room for the metal roll cage around the insides. The keyboard isn't as good as it used to be. And they're just not making any of the thick, completely upgradable laptops that made computer enthusiasts fall in love with them. What a lot of ThinkPad geeks consider to be the last great ThinkPad, the T480, it was released all the way back in 2018. Now of course, modern ThinkPads are still great laptops. I use a modern ThinkPad, and it's the best laptop I've ever used. And yes, I fell for the meme too. But the RAM is soldered in. If I want to upgrade the RAM, I have to buy a completely new laptop. So ThinkPads have lost some of their magic. Sure, they're probably still among the best laptops you can buy. And the laptop market has changed, and ThinkPads have to change with the times. But modern ThinkPads are much more comparable to other brands these days. They just don't stand out as much for being special as much as they used to. With all that said, the ThinkPad community is still very much alive and well today. You'll still see people using ancient ThinkPads today just because there's nothing else like them. Years old computers are still being recommended to everyone from comp sci students to professionals for their value. They're some of the best budget laptops. And their modern laptops are still very good. So the next time you're in the market for a new laptop and you think about getting a ThinkPad, 
there's a good chance you've been brainwashed by the cult of the ThinkPad. Join us 